that this is my perfect take. Hello everyone, welcome back, Dom here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can compile the perfect take out of your recordings, no matter what it is, vocals, guitars, drums, it doesn't matter, and I'm going to show you all the tricks that we have in Cubase to make this happen super easily and super fast, right after this. So in today's video, we're going to talk about comping. And if you don't know what comping is, it's a technique basically that allows you to have multiple takes of let's say a vocal or a bass line or a guitar take. And then you can compile the best bits out of each take to create the perfect take. This is a technique that has been used in studios for ages and even now there are still DAWs that don't offer this feature built into the program. But Cubase has had this for a long long time and you know with every version it's becoming better and it's up to the point now that it's really fast and you can create a perfect take in no time. And in order to show you how to do this I'm going to give you a practical example, a real world example. I have this track here, I have some drums, I have some roads and I'm going to lay down a bass line. I haven't rehearsed so I'm going to just play whatever comes to mind and I'm going to try out a few things, try different variations and then we can compile the perfect take out of all the takes that I'm going to record. As you can see I have my track ready to go here. So I'm going to be recording the bass and I'm going to set up my locators, my left and right locators here. I'm going to set Cubase in cycle mode. So that means that when I reach the end of the take it's going to take me back and I can record multiple takes very very easily. And then I'm going to show you how we compile the perfect take. I'm going to leave all the mistakes in and everything so that we take a realistic example, right? So let me bring my bass and let's record. So there we go. Now we have our takes here. As you can see, they're overlaid on top of each other. So when you see these, you know, kind of grid lines here in Cubase, that means that there's another layer of audio underneath this specific event. So how do you start? Let me show you. The one thing that you have to do is click on this icon here and select show lanes. Okay, so when you do this, you will see that we have the three different takes that are recording. This is the first one, the second one, and this is the last one, the third one, which is the one that we're going to listen to when we play back the track. Let's have a listen. So 
So as you can see, for every take, I was trying out different things. In some takes, I wasn't really sure what to play, so I was a little bit hesitant. Uh, in this take, I have some slap notes here and there. So let's try and compile my perfect take that I think works well for this track. Let me show you the tool that you need for this. The tool is this one, it's the comp tool, okay? This hand tool here. Many people that use Cubase have no idea what this is. And actually, this video was inspired by one of these people because they specifically asked me, how do I do comping in Cubase? How do I, you know, create a perfect take out of many vocal takes and all these things? In this case, I decided to go for bass and uh, let's take this tool. Now, this tool is so easy to use, you're gonna have loads of fun with it. I find it really, really satisfying when I work with the comp tool. Now, what I tend to do is, unless I have played completely on the grid, I tend to disable the snap, okay? Why? Because I want to have a little bit of control when I'm separating my different takes. And let me show you what I mean. So this is the comp tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first decide which take I'm going to use for the beginning. So I think I like the first part that I play. So I'm going to select, see, like that. And I'm going to select the first take. And see, now the first take is being highlighted. So now if I play this... Okay, that's fine. Now, what if I want to check what happens on the second take? I can just click on the second take. Okay, see, I was a little bit hesitant there. I don't like this bit. So I think this is a little bit too much. That's all right. That's, that's not what I want. I want the clear riff first, okay? So I'm going to keep the first take. Yeah. No, this is not good. Let's try maybe this one here. Let's go here. Let's see. So as you can see, because I have the snap deactivated, I can cut freely. I don't have any constraints, but sometimes it might help to have snap activated to just be able to cut very straight into a bar or into a beat, you know? So I'm going to do this now. I'm going to switch snap on and I'm going to see if I can, let's see, maybe I can cut this. See, now it snaps. That's very, very useful sometimes. But sometimes if you have notes in between, it might be better to have snap off so that you don't, you know, kind of have to do crossfades and all these things. So let's go here and let's see. See, for example, this bit here, let's see. Let's try this guy here. Aha, uh -huh. so yeah, I would like to have this slap note here. I don't want this here, it's too soon, but here it might add a nice flavor. So let's see. if I want to follow it with this one or I want to go back to take number one. Or maybe take two. Maybe, maybe this one makes more sense for this. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to show you something else. See this bit here, there's a little bit of a tail from the previous take. So maybe for this specific part, I can go and edit the cut point, you know? The edit point is right here, but maybe I want to kind of go like this, you know? And just go to a point where there's no overlap, like that. And see, they all update. You don't have to cut, cut, cut on every single take. So let's keep going. I like this pattern here, but I think it's too soon. It's a little bit more complicated than I want for now. So maybe I'm gonna go back to this pattern. Let's see. Okay, and now 
now maybe I want to try and see what I can do with these sections here. Let's see, because I want to have it a little bit of development. <laughs> Okay, the second take, I was still trying this pattern out, so I wasn't sure it's not really confident yet. So I think I'm gonna go for take three. Let's see. I'm not sure if I like this octave here. Let's go to the first take. Yeah, I like the, the first take because I'm not sure about this octave here. I played that high note. So now it goes without saying that you can still audition different takes. For example, if I go here, I can just switch the takes while I'm playing in real time. <laughs> that this is my perfect take. So let's play it back and check it out while it's switching between the different takes, how seamless it is and how quickly we could build that perfect take with the comp tool. Let's have a listen. So this is basically the meat of it, right? This is the main concept, how you can use the comp tool. But now I want to show you something else. When you're done with this, there are a few things that you can do. First of all, obviously you can close the lanes and now you have a nice single lane that you can see so that you don't get distracted, obviously. But now I'm going to give you a little tip, okay? Sometimes you might want to clean this up and the way to clean this up is you select your audio and then you go to menu, advanced, delete overlaps. In my case, I also have a shortcut for this, it's Alt D. So when you do this, now you have a clean version of it and the lanes are gone. So you've only kept the actual takes that you need. But here's my tip. Sometimes you might change your mind, okay? There's many times that I've changed my mind and I want to go back to a different take. And of course you can still do it because everything is non-destructive in Cubase, so you can open the lanes even after you deleted the material that you didn't need. But what I tend to do is I go here and I duplicate the version before cleaning it up. So I do this and see it's copy version 2, then I go back to my main version and then I clean it up. So I hit Alt D and that's it. Now I have the clean version, but if I ever want to go back to my lanes, here it is and here I can go back and edit these and I can go back and forth very, very easily. As you know, the versions in Cubase are brilliant. And it goes without saying that if you want to record a different take and still do comping, you can create a new version, you can still keep recording and you can create an alternative perfect take. You don't have to go and record on top of what you've already recorded if you want to start fresh, okay? So make sure you combine these two features, you know, the comping, but also the versions. So when you do this, you're good to go. You have your perfect take. If you want to take it one step forward, you can, of course, just select the audio and bounce in place. So audio, bounce selection, and you can turn this into a single track and I want to do this because my OCD is driving me nuts now. If you don't know about this trick, I'm going to take this pencil tool and I'm going to just kind of bring this down a little bit. That's gonna cause problems uh, when I send this bass to a compressor or something like this. You know, come on, let's let's treat it, you know, this is loud, you know, and we can take care of this before we get 
to the compressor. Maybe not so much, maybe like that. Let's see. Yeah, see? If you haven't watched the video, I'm gonna link it right here because this is a very, very cool feature. So there you go, guys. This is how you create the perfect take in Cubase, how you can do comping very easily. Sky's the limit. I use this all the time for vocals. Vocals is the number one reason why I use comping because for vocals, you might want to get a little phrase that's better in one take, a little syllable that's better in another take, and you can create perfect takes in Cubase super, super fast. And I find it, like I said, very satisfying. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, if you subscribe to the channel, if you haven't done so already, I would like to see you back and share it with any Cubase user you think they might find it useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one, my friends. Bye-bye.